Well, it's a big day for Texas politics. Two runoff elections happening today are drawing nationwide attention. And our Washington, D.C. correspondent Joe St. George joins us live with an in-depth look at what we can expect from this year's election. Good morning. Good morning, Joe. First stop, you know, this is one of the biggest topics at the center. Abortion. How is this playing a role in the yeah. Democratic primary runoffs? Well, look, I think much of the country is wondering what the second largest state, both in population and in land area, uh, what voters there in Texas truly think about abortion rights um, being under attack um, in this country, changing uh, in this country, certainly uh, by what lawmakers in Austin have passed uh, in recent months, but also by what the Supreme Court could decide uh, in the coming weeks. Specifically, uh, this primary in South Texas uh, involving a nine-term congressman, Henry Cuellar, he's the last anti-abortion uh, House Democrat. He was the only Democrat to vote against codifying uh, Roe v. Wade into law when the House uh, held that vote uh, several several days ago. Uh, does he lose uh, tonight? Um, does Texas politics shift a bit to the left? What does the future of Texas uh, politics for Democrats in particular uh, look like? Is it a more progressive political party in the state? Is it more moderate? And there are different opinions, no matter who you talk to, especially political consultants uh, in the Lone Star State, about the future there. So uh, a lot riding on tonight's uh, election, but you guys are right. Uh, it's all about really abortion rights. It's become a big topic uh, in Texas politics in recent weeks. And Joe, what's the significance of Texas politics in 2022? And why are races at the state level being watched so closely around the U.S.? Well, look, it goes back again uh, to to Texas being so big. And there are so many members of Congress there that a few races could very well uh, decide control of the House of Representatives. Um, and, and, and that is the truth. That's why a lot of people in Washington are paying close attention to the Lone Star State. Uh, but again, uh, what's interesting is going to be what is galvanizing voters, mobilizing to, them to the polls? Is it abortion or is it more about inflation? Is it more about crime? How much is immigration impacting voters in Texas today and President Biden's decisions regarding Title 42 and other immigration policies? I think that's why the country's watching. It's really a great test case that the results uh, will then impact other races between now and the November midterm election. And Joe, speaking about the uh, Roe v. Wade decision, are we any closer to finding a timeline on when the Supreme Court could come up with a decision? You know, it's frustrating to reporters who cover it like myself, but the Supreme Court doesn't send out a press release and say, hey, Joe St. George, on Tuesday, we're going to announce our abortion decision. That's not how the court works. In fact, all the court does, and you can go to the website right now, Supreme Court, uh, just search it in, go to their official website. All they do is have a little calendar on their homepage, and on yellow days, days that are highlighted in yellow, that, those are days in which they're going to announce some opinion, at least one opinion. They don't tell us in advance uh, when that will be. The expectation uh, is that the Supreme Court will wait to do this until the end of June or early July. But again, justices could rule on this uh, whenever they want. We, of course, will be watching it carefully. And when the opinion drops, typically around 9 a.m. Texas time, we will, be, we will, of course, be the first to let you know. Thank you so much, Joe. Yeah, we'll keep watching and waiting. We appreciate your time today. We look forward to speaking with you again next week.